Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let the house say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, praise God. praise God. Oh, bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. We sing the praises to our king, for he is the king of kings. Sing the praises to our king, for he is the king. We sing. sing the praises to our king, for he is the king of kings. We sing the praises to our king, for he is the king. Give him glory, give him glory, for he is the king. Give him glory, for he is the king. Give him glory, give him glory. Come on and praise him, for he is the king. For he is the king of kings. We sing the praises to our king. For he is the king. We sing. We sing the praises to our king. Come on and wave your hands wherever you are. King. We sing the praises to our king. For he is the Give him glory. Give him glory. For he is the king. Give him glory. For he is the king. Give him glory. Give him glory. Hallelujah. For he Give him glory, hey, for he is a king. Oh, hail, oh, hail, King Jesus. Oh, hail, oh, hail, Let us bow our heads for the invocation. Accept our thanks, O Lord, for the manifold blessings you have poured into our lives. As we seek you, teach us how to pray and establish us in the ways of our God. Keep us focused, dear Father, on the things that will draw us closer to you. You promised us if we draw closer to you, you will draw closer to us. We will surrender this service now, the participants and the worshipers. In the name of Jesus, we ask these blessings, O oh God, in your name, amen and amen.
Lord for another day we worship God because of who he is because he loves us and he has brought us thus far so we should be praising him giving him the glory for some people didn't wake up this morning but you are here he has touched you with the finger of love this morning so let's praise him let's stand and sing our hymn of praise my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Oh, the ground is sinking sand. 
NIV version. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If this, if that were not so, I would have told you that I go, I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and readers of his holy word. Thanks be to God. Amen. It's prayer time, church. Time to go before the throne. Lay down your burdens. I lift my hand in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for oh, you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. As we gather here this morning, we come before you with our hearts filled of gratitude and praise. May your Holy Spirit fill this place, filling our hearts with your love and peace. Oh Lord, we thank you. We thank you for granting us another day of life another opportunity to praise and worship your name. Heavenly Father, we ask for your presence to continue to be with us as we lift our hands in praise, as we sing the songs of Zion, our voices and worship, 
and as our pastor brings forth your word, so we may receive your guidance and wisdom. Bless our pastor, Lord. Continue to keep him in your loving arms. Oh, Lord, we ask blessings that you will fill him up, Lord Jesus. Bless him in a mighty way, Heavenly Father. Continue to pour into him, Lord Jesus, as he pours out into us, Lord Jesus. We thank you right now for his leadership, his guidance, his love, his kindness, and his friendship. We ask right now, Lord, that you be with our First Lady. Continue to keep her in the palm of your hands, Lord Jesus. Continue to keep her. Continue to bless her, Lord Jesus. Continue to keep her doing your will, Heavenly Father, as she continues to share the word with those that you've called her to share. Bless her in a mighty way, Lord Jesus. Bless her and keep her. Oh, Father, hear us, Lord, as we come before you. Lord, we bring to you right now our hopes, fears, and burdens. We lay them down at your feet, knowing that you are our refuge and our strength, knowing that you are our help in the time of needs and trouble, knowing that you are our doctor when we are sick, afflicted with an illness, Lord Jesus. Now we ask, Lord Jesus, that you grant us the strength peace, healing, courage to face the challenge of this day, Lord Jesus, and every day of our lives, Lord Jesus. Grant it right now, Lord Jesus. Grant it right now, Lord Jesus. Grant it right now, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for your help, Heavenly pray, Father. Pray, pray. We thank you right now, Lord. Help us to be the light in the lives of those that we come across, Heavenly Father. Help us to be the light in the dreary days, Lord Jesus. Help us to be the light in the darkness of this world, Lord Jesus, in our communities, in our families, and on our job, Lord Jesus. Help us to be that beacon of light that shines bright, Lord Jesus, that you may get the glory, Heavenly Father. Bless the leaders of this country, Lord Jesus. Bless the leaders of this world, Bless the leaders in the nation. Bless the leaders in our denomination, Lord Jesus. Continue to bless the ministers, the preachers, the pastors, the congregation. Bless us one by one and come. And Lord Jesus, bless us collectively, Lord. Bless us one and another. Let your love abide in us. Lord, we thank you right now for your constant presence. We thank you for the gift of your son. And we just praise your holy name today. And we lift you up on high. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just one. And breathe new life within us. 
send a refreshing Lord and saturate our hearts. Let your glory, 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 Let glory. Let your glory fill this place. Let your all consuming, Let your all fire. consuming fire fill this fill tabernacle. Send a refresh and Lord and saturate, saturate our hearts. Come on and rain, rain on us and breathe, Lord. Breathe on us. Shower down. Shower down. Shower down. Shower down. Shower down.
Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God. Let us pray. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Speak to the inward parts. And Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. John chapter 14, verse number 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth, and the life. I want to talk from one phrase, I am the way. I am the way. Suppose you were at Trumbull Mall, and someone asked you, how do you get to Walter's Memorial AME Zion Church? You would probably say, go out the main entrance, take a left, and take your, your first right onto the ramp that leads to 15 North. Go down to exit number 48S. Stay on 48S, which is, will turn into Route 8 South. Get off at exit number 1. At the end of the ramp, take a left. Go as far as you can. Take a right on the Lafayette Street. Are y'all still here? Go two blocks and take a left at Railroad Avenue. And then take a right onto Broad Street and the church will be on your right hand side. Are you still here? But suppose that person asked you, man, that's a little confusing. Because there are a lot of turns and twists. And so the person said, well, just get in your car and follow me. Are you still here? <laughs> that way you cannot miss it. Walters and those under the sound of my voice, this is what Jesus does for us. He does not only give us advice. He doesn't only direct us and counsel us. He takes us by the hand and leads us. Are y'all still here? He walks with us. He strengthens us. He guides us. He directs us personally every single day. He does not tell us about the way. He is the way. 
Y'all all right? He says, I am the way. Time and time again, Jesus told his disciples where he was going. But somehow they did not understand him. He said in John 7, 33, I am with you only for a short time. Then I'm going to the one who sent me. He had told them that he was going to the father who had sent him and with whom and with whom he was the one. But they still did not understand what was going on. They did not understand the way by which Jesus was going because the way was the cross. Are y'all still here? They could not understand this. In Luke 24, 7, he says, the Son of Man must be delivered over into the hand of sinners to be crucified. And on the third day, he will rise again. You must understand, they saw Jesus solve every problem. So how can this be? They saw him turn water to wine. They saw him open blind eyes. They saw him... Causing the lame to walk. He saw, they saw him cause the deaf to hear. He cast out demons and he caused the dead to be raised. Jesus preached to and taught to thousands of people. He took two fish and five biscuits and fed 5,000 men plus the women and children. And then he said that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinners to be crucified. These disciples were saying, no way. We don't understand this. We, we, we're not feeling this. These brothers, these brothers were bewildered and did not understand this at all. But there was one among them who could never say that he understood what he did not understand. And that one was Thomas. And, and there's something that you can learn from Thomas. There, there are people who are in classes. There are people in universities who will sit in a class and, and the instructor or the professor will say, now, do y'all understand what I just said? And they will sit there with zip lips and not understand what was said. Are y'all still here? But that was not Thomas. Thomas was the man who was far too honest and far too earnest to be satisfied with any vague, pious expressions. Thomas had to be sure, so Thomas expressed his doubts and his failures to understand. And the wonderful thing is that it was the question of a doubting man which provoked one of the greatest things that Jesus ever said. No one need to be ashamed of his or her doubts. For this is amazingly and blessedly true that he who seeks will find. How can you sit in a place of learning and you're supposed to receive knowledge, but you're not understanding the knowledge and you sit there with your mind and your lips and your ears closed? Good morning. Huh? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That is a great saying for us. But could you imagine how great a saying it was for a Jew that was hearing it for the first time? And it, Jesus took three of the great basic conceptions of Jewish religion and made the claim that in him, all three found their full realization. 
and their full expression in that he is the way, that he is the truth, and he is the life. The Jews talk much about the way. Uh, which men must walk and the way of God. God said to Moses, you shall not turn aside to the right or to the left. You shall walk in the ways of the Lord and God, the things that God has commanded you. Moses said to the people, I know that after my death, you will utterly corrupt yourself and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you. Isaiah said, your ears shall hear a word behind you. That is the way you walk in it. You must walk in the way that God is telling you to walk. Isaiah 30 and 21, in the brave new world, there would be a highway, which is called the highway of holiness. And in it, the wayfaring man, even the simple soul, could not be lost. Isaiah 35 and 8 uh, was the psalmist's prayer. He said, teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path. Uh, the, the Jews had much to say about the way of God and in which man must walk. And Jesus had come and to say, I am the way. But what did he mean? In John 13, 33, he said, my children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. This prompted Peter to ask, where are you going? Peter and the others did not understand that Jesus was speaking of his death and ascension into heaven. Jesus' response was, where I am going, you cannot come now, but you will follow me later. Peter still misunderstood and declared that he would follow Jesus wherever he went. He, Peter said, I will even lay down my life for you if necessary. As Jesus patiently continued to teach his disciples, he began speaking more plainly about heaven describing uh, the place he was going to prepare for them. In my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it wasn't true, my brothers, I wouldn't tell you this. Jesus said, you know the way to the, to the place where I'm going. Speaking for the others, Thomas said they did not know where he was going. So how could they know the way? How could they follow him there? It was an answer to the question that Jesus uttered in one of the seven famous I am statements. He said, I am. I am in the Greek language. I am is a very intense way of referring to yourself. It would be compared to saying I myself and I only am who I am. Several other times in the Gospels, we find Jesus using the words. In Matthew uh, 22 and 32, Jesus quotes Exodus 3 and 6, where God uses the same intensive form to say, I am the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. In, in John 5, uh, I'm sorry, in John 8, 58, Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you before Abraham was, I am. The Jews clearly understood Jesus to be calling himself God because they took up stones to stone him for committing blasphemy and equating himself to God. In Matthew 28 and 20, as Jesus gave the Great Commission, he gave it great emphasis on saying, I am with you always. Y'all didn't get that. 
He came back from the grave to tell them that I will be with you always. And that means wherever you are, God is telling you this morning that I am with you always. I'll be with you to the end of the age. When the soldiers came seeking Jesus in the garden the night before he was crucified, they said, we're seeking Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, I am he. And his word was so powerful, the Bible says that they stumbled and fell to the ground. These words reflect the very name of God in Hebrew, Yahweh, which means to be or the self-existing one. It is the name of power and authority, and Jesus claimed it as his own. When we talk about the way Jesus used a definite article to distinguish himself as the only way. Did y'all hear that? The only way. A way is a path or route. The disciples had expressed their own confusion about where he was going and how they could follow. And, and as he told them from the beginning, Jesus was again telling uh, them and us to follow me. There is no other path to heaven, no other way to the Father. Peter said the same thing or this same truth years later to the rulers in Jerusalem. Talking about Jesus, he said, salvation is found in no one else. For there was no other name or the heaven given to men by which we must be saved. The exclusive nature of the only path to salvation is expressed in the words, I am the way. Jesus is the only way to heaven. He's the only way. The only way. I said the only way to heaven for many reasons. Jesus was chosen by God <laughs> to be our Savior. Did y'all get that? I said he was chosen by God to be our Savior. Jesus is the only one to have come down from heaven, and also he's the only one that returned to heaven. He's the only person to have lived a perfect human life. Are y'all still here? He's the only sacrifice for sin. He alone fulfilled the law and the prophets. He is the only man to have conquered death forever. The only one. Are y'all still here? He is the only mediator between God and man. He's the only man whom God has exalted to the highest place. Jesus spoke of himself as the only way to heaven. He presented himself as the object of faith. He said in his words, he said, my words are life. He promised that those who believe in him would have eternal life. Those who believe in him would have what? Eternal life. He is the sheep. He is the gate of the sheep. He is the bread of life. He is the resurrection. No one else can rightly make those claims. You ever see somebody try to pretend to be somebody else? But let me tell you something. I don't care how you fake it, you will never be Jesus. Are you still here? Paul was speaking in the synagogue at Antioch. He, sing, he singled out Jesus as the Savior. He said, I want you to know that through Jesus, that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin. Glory to God. I said glory to God. 
Are you still listening to me? John writing to the church at large said the, the, the name of Jesus is the basis for our forgiveness. I'm writing to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on, on the account of his name. Are you still here? No one but Jesus Christ can forgive you of your sins. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. No one can wash your sins away but Jesus. Eternal life in heaven is made possible only through the shed blood of Christ. Jesus prayed. Now this is eternal life that you may know that you may that that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent to receive God's free gift of salvation. We must look to Jesus and Jesus alone. We must look to Jesus and Jesus alone. I said we must look to Jesus and Jesus alone. We must trust in Jesus. His death on the cross is our payment for sin and in his resurrection. This righteousness from God comes through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to every soul that believes. Somebody say glory to God. I say glory to God. It reminds me, it takes me back to the hymn we used to sing uh, at the cross. At the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. It was there by faith that I received my sight. And now, somebody say, and now. And now, I'm happy all the day. At last, and did my Savior bleed? And did my sovereign die at the cross? At the cross. It wasn't at the casino. It was at the cross. It wasn't at the playground. It was at the cross. At the cross. At the cross. Where my Savior suffered, bled, and died. Hallelujah. He is the only way. He is my Savior. Is he your Savior? If he's your Savior, let me hear you say yes. If he's your Savior, let me hear you say yes. Somebody say glory to God for the Savior. If the Savior that woke you up is the Savior who keeps you safe. But most of all, if the Savior that has prepared a place for you Every believer, there's only one way to the kingdom. And that way is Jesus. Somebody say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I said, Jesus, in the morning, Jesus, at noon. Jesus, in the evening, Jesus, my way maker, Jesus, my savior, Jesus, oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory.
what a savior. The first thing I want to say is that if you have not accepted him, or if you think there is another way of getting into the kingdom, some people are confused. They think they can work your way in. They think you can pay your way in. But there's no toll bridge to get into the kingdom. Are y'all still here? The only way is that you surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins. Every single one of us have fallen short. But he died that you can be fully washed. Are you still here? Every sin stain that is on your soul, he makes it white as snow. You don't need any uh, Tide or Clorox or, or any other detergent. All you need is the blood of Jesus and faith in him. If you hear or under the sound of my voice and you have not accepted him, please do it now. Life is not promised to none of us. He's reaching out to you. He's knocking on your door. Matter of fact, our doors are open to you. If you are without a church home, you can come a part of this family. Knock out two balls at the same time. Give your life to Christ and become a member of the house of God in the same moment. Are y'all still here? Is there one this morning? Is there one? Oh, glory to God. Mm -hmm. 